no, 5G is not killing your trees, it's not killing your grass, it's not killing you, it's not really killing anything, other than those delicious download speeds that it gets. What's up everybody, this is Scott, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you why 5G is important, but mostly kind of, I'm gonna dumb it down because I needed to dumb it down for myself. Like I knew it was a big deal, but I never really realized how big of a deal. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why it's a big deal. So like I teased in the beginning, no, it's not causing cancer. It's not killing trees and grass and causing COVID-19. It's not doing any of those things. So let's talk about the things that it does do. And before I get into all of that, let's go back in the Wayback Machine and talk a little bit before 5G. So what started as 2 and 3G in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s quickly escalated to 4G in 2011, with the very first device being the HTC Thunderbolt. And for those of you that know the Thunderbolt, you'll realize that that device was hot trash, like literally hot. It would physically get hot when it was connected to 4G. Also, the battery life totally sucked on it, and it was the very first 4G LTE device, which came out in like March of 2011. That device gave us speeds faster than anything that we had in our homes, and 4G LTE was really impressive, but it came at a ridiculously bad cost. And I'm not talking about economics, I'm talking about literally like two hour battery life for a phone when you were connected to the 4G network. So way back in that 2011, you had really good 4G LTE on a single device in a very small area because the coverage just wasn't there. So for those of us that maybe had lived through the idea of 4G really starting with 3G and then it was like this big revolutionary thing, you'll understand that 4G started in the cities and then started to grow its way out. A lot like what's happening right now with 5G. Keep in mind the very first iPhone that had 4G was the iPhone 5, which came out in September of 2012, a full year and a half after the very first 4G LTE device. 5G has a very small footprint right now, starting basically in the cities, and it's only available on just a handful of devices. And one of those devices is the Samsung S20 Plus 5G from Verizon. So it's seemingly really eerily similar to the 4G path from its past. Now we fast forward to what is now today or what was 2019, 2020, 4G is pretty much ubiquitous everywhere. Every device has 4G. And it took us about that decade to get to a point where 4G was available to everybody. I hinted at the speeds and that's really where 5G is really gonna start to shine for a variety of reasons. One, the download speeds are incredible. You can see by some of the screenshots right now on screen, you can get download speeds of over a gig easily in an area that has 5G. And I can hear people right now talking about, yeah, but what's the upload speeds? The upload speeds are no slouch either. They're in and around between 35 and 50 megabits per second as an upload, which is basically on par with what I already have in my home. And honestly, it doesn't stop with the download or upload speed. The latency could actually be four times better with 5G. So yeah, 5G is a much bigger deal from a speed and consumer perspective. But here's a reason why it's an even bigger deal than a lot of people think. As we grow and become a much more bigger connected internet of thing type society, that means more data, more devices that are connected. So with a 4G or LTE that's really oversaturated, you're seeing the downloads and upload speeds really reflect in a consumer experience. Additionally, every 10 years upgrading from 2G to 3G, 3 to 4, and 4 to 5, it's incredibly expensive for the wireless providers to upgrade their infrastructure. And that's right, you guessed it, it comes directly out of the pockets of the consumer because we know that they're not going to do that out of the kindness of their hearts. Actually, 5G has the ability to handle all the way up to 20 gigs down and upload speeds could also get much, much higher than the 50 that you get today. So the fact that 5G is gonna give them better infrastructure that lasts longer than a single decade is great for us as consumers because it means we're not paying for the constant state of infrastructure support. And let's be real, they're still gonna jack up our costs, but I would rather have the ability to get 20 gigs down and my cost increase rather than my speed decrease and my ability to consume also start to decrease. That's why 5G is a big deal. So I'm excited to see devices like 
the S20 Plus from Verizon and additional devices. I would be surprised if we see the iPhone come out this year, maybe 2022, given everything going on with COVID. But again, that follows a very similar path to what we already had with 4G. So that's it. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>